By nearly any measure, he was a model NFL player, an Ivy League educated linebacker who missed just a handful of games during 14 seasons in the league. Reggie Williams helped lead the Bengals to two Super Bowls while winning the NFL Man of the Year and Humanitarian Service Awards. He was a Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year, not to mention, while still playing, a Cincinnati City Councilman. So why is a one-time NFL poster boy now at odds with the league? Fold producer Gabe Silverman has his story. I uh, play with a lot of intensity. Always wanted to uh, make the impact play that would change the momentum of the game. Sometimes I find myself high in the air hurtling towards the quarterback and wonder, how'd I get here? It's hard to imagine that the man who was so dominant on the field for nearly a decade and a half can barely walk upright today. Pain is relative. So on a day-to-day -day basis, if your starting point is a broken foot, okay, how much does it hurt to have a broken foot? Well, my pain is so great that I don't even notice that I have a broken foot. The source of agony for Reggie Williams are his knees. Over the course of 24 surgeries, including four knee replacements, he contracted a flesh-eating bacteria. It cut away three inches from his right leg, leaving a gaping hole. The trauma was so bad, it required an extreme procedure called a double gastroc flap to patch it up. A double gastroc flap means they take the other side and then flip that up. So now you have no calf muscles. At issue is who should pay for the healthcare costs, not just for Williams, but for the thousands of retired NFL players whose on-field injuries have long-lasting effects. I, I didn't get my knee injuries from an allergic reaction to pixie dust while working at the Disney company. My injuries and knee problems occurred because of surgeries that took place during my career with the Cincinnati Bengals. If players play in the NFL for three years, they can get five years of insurance when they retire, after which they are covered by future employers or they have to self-insure. But the more serious injuries, like Williams' leg, is then considered a pre-existing condition and is virtually uninsurable. I have insurance for everything with this, but everything revolves around this. And I've been without insurance for that since uh, 2009, uh, so that all of the costs having to do with rehab or any kind of therapy or going to the doctor, uh, all of that is out of pocket. The NFL and the Players Association do have a select number of programs, but players complain it's unnecessarily difficult to be accepted. A congressional report in 2008 showed that the NFL Disability Program only had a 34% initial approval rate. Even if accepted, players complain the payouts aren't sufficient to cover the costs. Williams, after years of paperwork, was granted $5,000 for only one of his knee replacements. You know, when I got the letter from the NFL saying you've been approved for a $5,000 grant for having a knee replacement, uh, they acted like I should treat it like I won the lottery. Uh, my operation cost over a half million dollars. Five thousand dollars is just a drop in the bucket, not only for the actual cost, but the mental cost. Uh, I'd rather the NFL treat me with the respect that comes with having played their game for so long and not force players to grovel and act as if every handout deserves a Congressional Medal of Honor. One area of contention has been workman's compensation, a program that is paid by the employer, but varies wildly from state to state. But for football players, the trauma of the game can manifest years after the limit, which means they're no longer eligible. That then forces them into other taxpayer-supported programs like Social Security Disability. But there is a loophole. For the past few years, players have flocked to California, a state where there is virtually no time limit to claim workman's compensation. The bureaucracy of trying to even figure out, you know, why to, and where to file is something that uh, we were never given as part of our exit, you know, interview with the NFL. In fact, I don't remember getting an exit interview uh, when I retired after 14 years from the Cincinnati Bengals. Over the past few years, claims in California have shot up which has made it the focal point for lobbying from both the players and the NFL. That's bull. While we were visiting Reggie Williams at his home in Orlando, he received news that the California Assembly voted 57 to 1 on a bill that would close the loophole. Based upon things beyond my control, things going on in the state of California, the enormously deep pockets 
of the NFL that they can get all kind of lobbyists to basically speak their speak. Today they scored. They gained an advantage. Okay, they took away some hope of justice. In this letter, uh, there's a side of Mike which I wish was still alive right now. <laughs> November 28, 2007, dear Reggie, congratulations on all that you have accomplished at Disney. You deserve to be proud about all of this. As a Dartmouth guy and someone associated with the Bengals, I have always been proud of what you have done. I wish you were well with your health issues. You have dealt with the whole rehabilitation of your knees in a heroic fashion. You deserve a good result. I hope it comes soon. Sincerely, Mike. And you're right, Mike, I do deserve a good result. I wish the representatives in the state of California knew that the owners really felt the players deserve a good result in private, but public are litigious like no one else.